WGN's network president. He said they wanted to find little known stories. What did you guys kind of know about the Appalachian region before you came into this and how did some of that research inform the characters you guys eventually ended up playing? Well, you, I mean, your experience is, is unique coming from Australia and not knowing much of it. Yeah, a whole, whole kind of, um, you know, collection of stereotypes, really, you know, like a, just the kind of, you know, I mean, you know, the obvious examples of Beverly Hillbillies and Deliverance and, the, you know, those kind of two poles are the obvious representations of the play. So, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, kind of funny yokels or really violent, scary yokels, you know. Um, with inbreeding and all of that right. sort of stuff, yep. you know. Um, so, so I suppose you come to it with very, you know, simplistic kind of ideas of what it is, and then you and then you start to dig, you know, start to try to find something a bit more complex. Yeah, and it's it's and you know I think for for many people who are not living there, it's a world it's really easy to make judgments about because of the stereotypes about it, and you know that that's. Uh, one of the things we are trying not to do is make judgments about it and, 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 and find something a little uh, more unique and, and truthful about it. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, I think the, 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 the identity of the Farrells is something you know, that's, that's a step removed as well from right. that, obviously. Right. It's not right. like we're saying there's a group of people down there who are exactly like the Farrells who are doing what they're doing. Right. There's a heightened aspect to that part of the story. You know? like a distillation of a group of ideas around that place. Yep. And then the story that we're dealing with down in the town is, is a little bit more like a realistic kind of telling of, or an attempt at that. Mm -hmm. Well, as we talked about off camera, just mm -hmm. being removed from technology, did that kind of help you a little bit get into this role a little more? And for you, uh, I don't know if you're into all this technology, internet, that type of stuff, but is it you know, something you have to kind of separate yourself from and get in this mindset to come and play these characters? Well, I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, me, that's my own thing about, you know, the whole new social media world is just, you know, I, it, it just blows right by my it's head. A, it it exactly means almost right. nothing to me. Uh, I'm not sure that's helpful in, in doing, um, you know, this guy, Big Foster, lives up on top of the mountain and, and part of this clan that's been around for 200 years and living off the grid, and that, that's pretty extreme. I found a good sense of humor in it. I enjoyed playing a character who was kind of willfully ignorant of that sort of stuff and who had had nothing to do with his day-to-day -day life that you could kind of bring a sense of irony to it. There's a great sense of humor in this show too about that sort of stuff yeah. as well, I think. You know. So this is the age of the anti-hero on television in the last two decades. Um, do you see Big Foster as this anti-hero that people are going to start rooting for or pulling for? Or is he really going to kind of turn it? I know you can't give away spoilers, but be one of the antagonists of the show. I cannot predict how people will respond to Big Foster. Um, I can tell you that that he he started out just as as just a bad guy, and we uh, we we tried to root him in something. You know, one of the things in the story is this world on top of the mountain is uh, they're trying to the coal companies are trying to take it over, and Big Foster is one of the only people who really understands the danger that that our our world, our community, our way of life, that danger that we are in. And, and that's what roots everything that he does. And, and if there's any sort of anti-hero feeling, it's he really is truly fighting against something and for something in a very vivid way. But nothing, nothing in this series is really black and white. Even the coal company you can look at and say, oh, look at the, the viciousness of what they do. I mean, it's such an offensive concept. Everybody can understand it when you just say it, mountaintop right. removal, yeah. coal mining. It's right. like, that's a, that's a pretty offensive idea to a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds, whether you're very religious and you believe that God created the, 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 the earth, you know, that that would be, you know, a really offensive thing to do, or if you're an environmentalist or, you know, even right. just there's something terrible about it. But even the coal company in this series isn't, isn't allowed to be just completely bad. And nor is it in Appalachia. It's very complex, you know, people down there, that's the source of their employment, right. you know. Mm -hmm. It's the source, of, that's the reason that the communities still exist in some places, for better or worse, you know. Well, it's an interesting thing. I mean, you know, with the show being titled Outsiders, it's it's kind of who really is who really is the outsider. You know, to us, the people in town are the outsiders in our 